We're here at ITU Telecom World 2014 in Doha in the state of Qatar and I'm very pleased to be joined by Gabriel Gauthier who is Executive Vice President for Global Government and Public Affairs for Alcatel Lucent. Gabriel, very nice to see you again. Mm, nice to meet you. Again. Now, I wanted to start off by talking about here the central theme at ITU Telecom World 2014 is future in focus. What developments in technology, policy or business do you see as key to the near future? I see three main uh, technological evolutions. The first one is the of course the rapid growth of mobile data and of uh, mobile devices. Um, an explosion to the, to the tremendous um, uh, disruption and revolution to, uh, to a level that we had not anticipated before. You know the smartphone is the innovation in the history of mankind that had the biggest, uh, the most rapid penetration. It, it, in 18 months it reached the same penetration as uh, the color TV in 15 years. Uh, and then come on top of this all these mobile uh, the devices, Internet of Things, connected things, uh, everything, connect everything, and by 2020 uh, 70 billion objects will be connected. So the first thing is this. The second is video, the continuous explosion of video, and the third is cloud. Um, the, so all the data in the cloud, so cloud and the device, uh, and in between the networks need to be updated. So I see these are the three biggest uh, evolutions that we see. Now you've just presented a keynote on making a broadband universal. Uh, is this a realistic vision and how could it best be achieved, do you think? It it's could be a myth. Uh, it could look like a myth for a number of countries that still have very poor broadband penetration. And a lot of them are here today. Uh, the, the emerging, fast-growing economies um, like uh, Africa, Middle East and, um, and some countries in Southeast Asia. Uh, but I think there are ways, so we, we spent quite a bit of time of seeing what innovative thinking bringing universal broadband to these countries can mean because they have to have the target and the ambition of bringing universal broadband to the population which is starving for broadband and it's a young, more uh, internet aware population than our old European developed, so-called developed economies. So they want broadband badly. Um, so we have looked at the different models and what it implied as a disruption both for the, uh, for the way of thinking of policymakers and for the actors because there are models, new investment models, new ways of uh, lowering down the cost because you have to lower down the cost of the infrastructure and new ways to monetize the networks for the so-called service providers um, in partnerships with new actors. Uh, so the buzzwords were sharing public-private partnerships, attract long-term infrastructure funds in the first layer, passive layer of the network to unleash the intelligence um, of the cloud because the networks uh, the other big disruption is the virtualization. The cloud means virtualization of the telecom networks, unleash the intelligence in the upper layers. So uh, this means another way of thinking for, for um, uh, service providers, another way of partnering in building the platforms in partnerships with the, the ones that are going to invent the new usage of the Internet of Things of the future. And I wanted to ask you very much in terms of partnerships, what role is, what's the role of partnerships in this new disruptive age? First of all, the partnerships is the partnerships between the actors to co-invest, lower the cost. So first thing. Then the role of partnerships is partnerships of our sector to, with other sectors. Is we, a, lot of, a lot of us preach to the choir by uh, preaching to the telecom sector. We need to reach out to the education sector, to the health sector. Uh, I was sitting on the empowering board um, that Mr. Brahim Hassanu set. Uh, so partnerships of our sector with the other sectors in the public sphere, partnerships, private partnerships of the telecom service providers with new agile commerce, um, not necessarily the big GAFA bands, but small um, disruptive new players uh, of the Internet of Things. For instance, in smart cities, a service provider needs to uh, partner with people that are going to capture uh, and be active in energy, transport, uh, water, watering of parks uh, and the like. So these are other kinds of partnerships, partnering outside our sector. And in terms of uh, the events that we're at at the moment, ITU Telecom World 2014, what's the main value for Alcatel Lucent of attending events such as this? The first value is to feel the atmosphere. Um, as being, being responsible for the government segment, of course, a lot of policymakers are here and gather. 
uh, see how it evolved, how they evolve, what the questions are, uh, what they want from us, have a feedback. Um, and then also I very much liked this session on the future with the futurists, uh, which bring us um, in contact with futurists outside of our sector. Not the telecom sector futurists, we do have a lot of them even in, in, our, in our own company, but people that think what are going to be the uses of tomorrow and, and what give us ideas on what type of partnerships also to, to, to build, because I really clearly believe that our sector, the future of our sector is cross-border partnerships. Now there's a lot of uh, people, a lot of important people here at the moment. What is your main message to participants and delegates in IT Telecom World? Is, um, think out of the box, don't think backwards, think to the future um, and uh, don't embrace new investment models, uh, new partnerships and don't be afraid. It's true that there are going to be disruption in our sector but we should embrace the future because we are uh, we have the, the, really the advantage and the great honour to work in a, a, a super uh, sector, which is the ICT sector. And finally, I'd like to ask you, what key innovation do you think will make the most difference in the next five to ten years? Uh, I think it's definitely what we call the Internet of Things and all the promises it carries. Uh, without us being able, we may need to be modest, without us being able to imagine what it will what it will embrace, but also with, uh, and I liked very much the session yesterday on the futurist, with bearing in mind that we need to bear the human uh, conditions and the human factors in this Internet of Things. So the ethical part of it must not be forgotten. Definitely not. Thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today. Thank you very much for having Great. me. Great.